just who should you be sitting and who should you be starting in week two of the fantasy season. We're going to talk about that in today's video as we move along and look at the other eight matchups that we have not covered. As always, if you could like this video and subscribe, that would be fantastic. And we're just going to get right into it. We have a video that came out yesterday that is previewing uh, seven of the 15 matchups. And we have the other uh, eight of the 15 matchups in today's video. Of course, Thursday Night Football is over. So that's where the 16th comes from. And uh, yeah, we're just going to get right into it, guys. We're going to talk about, um, you know, just some fringe guys. You know, the obvious starts, the obvious sits we're not really going to talk about. We're going to talk more about the fringe guys, um, any guys that I'm benching um, and players that I'm starting them over. So uh, we're going to get to it. All the rankings and scorings and averages that you hear is half PPR, just so you know. And uh, we're going to start with the Chargers at the Titans. The Chargers are favored minus three over under at 45. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll start with the Chargers. And it, it seems like I got practice reports, you know, we're recording this Friday afternoon. Uh, so all the full practice reports aren't in, but it seems like Austin Eckler is not going to be starting. So, yeah, I'm just uh, the one thing I'm looking for this game is just the, the backfield usage. Um, and just in terms of the run percentage, does this make the Chargers pass a little bit more? Um, I think they passed less than 50% of the times, 50% of the time last week, which is not what everyone was um, expecting with the Chargers and Justin Herbert, expecting Herbert to throw for 5,000 yards and 70% of the time. And I think it's going to be a little more balanced than that throughout the year. But I do think in this game, they do focus on passing the ball more. Um, obviously, Tennessee has a really, really good uh, defensive front. Um, they have for basically since Mike Rabel has been the coach. I think they don't. Uh, they don't really give up points to uh, to running backs very much. So if you look at it, last year um, the Titans were ranked third against running backs, behind only San Francisco and the Patriots, averaging or giving up 16.2 points per game to running backs. Uh, and then you look about uh, what they did uh, this last week, where they only gave up 6.7 points fantasy points to running backs. Uh, that's the second best uh, on the week. So. I think it's more of the same for there for for that reason. Uh, Joshua Kelly's intriguing, but I'm a he's not like a, a smash start in my opinion. One one of the reasons being, I think they're going to be a little more balanced in terms of um, they're they're not going to just give Josh Kelly now that Eckler's out all the carries. I think they're going to use guys like Isaiah Spiller or, or Elijah Dotson. Um, so I'm not as high as I am like normally when you have a top tier running back go out. Their backup, their clear cut backup is like a smash start. To me, that's not necessarily the case. Um, you know, I'm just kind of looking at where he's ranked. I would start Josh Kelly over, you know, the Baltimore guys, um, over Kyron Williams, over the Rams guys, um, over Zeke Elliott. And I would think about starting him over like a Samaj P. Ryan um, and maybe a Tyler Algier. But that's kind of where like I'm getting close to like, okay, I can't get much higher than that. So to me, he's like a fringe top 30 guy. So um, if you have other, a couple other guys ahead of him, don't just bench your guys just to start Josh Kelly because he's going to be starting because I don't think it's necessarily going to be a smash play. It could be, but I don't think it's just a lock. So, um, you know, once it gets to that uh, Brian Robinson, Javante Williams um, range, then I'm, I'm kind of out. I think I'm going to start. Uh, those guys over Josh Kelly. So um, in terms of uh, quarterback, obviously, Justin Herbert, you're starting. No questions. Um, should have a bounce back week. And then guys like Mike Williams and Keenan Allen also need to be started. I know um, they didn't have a smash um, week one game like we thought they would. Again, the Chargers did run the ball a lot. I heard um, in the uh, from some beat reporters. That was just kind of their – their plan of attack against Miami and, and it worked in, in, in the sense of, you know, they barely lost that game and they scored over th like 34, 35 points or something. So their, their action plan worked. So I, I think they do because they know Tennessee's good against the ground game and probably weak against the uh, passing game. I think they're going to pass the ball more here. So I'm, I'm just kind of saying Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are basically locks. Um, I'm not really going to talk about them. You, you, you shouldn't, unless you're in a position where you're just stacked at receiver to where Mike Williams is like, if you have like, if you're deciding between like Mike Williams and, and 
uh, Debo Samuel or something, then yeah, go Debo. But I'm going to say those two guys should be started for the most part. Um, and then in terms of the tight end, Gerald Everett, you know, um, I know Parham caught the touchdown last week, so they could be using Donald Parham a little bit more. I think you can find better options on this team than, than Everett. Everett's more of a best ball kind of player for me or a DFS kind of player where he could hit any week where he could get two touchdowns and 60 yards. We've seen it before, especially on this offense. But um, in lineup leagues, man, you're just going to drive yourself crazy knowing when to start him. So just go with someone a little more consistent. You know, uh, 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 Juwan Johnson maybe. Um, I like Jake Ferguson more. Hayden Hurst and Cole Komet to me are are better plays than than uh, Gerald Everett. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just frustrating there, uh, in my opinion. To know when to start those guys so um but yeah that that's it for the chargers kind of moving on to the titans what i'm looking for here is is, tra- is can Traylon burks be the man uh, i think as far as i know hopkins deandre hopkins is questionable for this game um so if he's out can Traylon burks be the guy that you know we all thought he would be that he was drafted to be can he do it so um, we'll start with the quarterback. You're not going to start Tannehill. Please don't start Tannehill. I don't care that Tua just put up 470 yards on the Chargers. Do not start Tannehill. You should have better options. Derrick Henry is a no-brainer start. Um, Tajay Spears is not. I know I know there are a lot of news floating around out there that, oh, Tajay Spears outsnapped Derrick Henry. And, yeah, that is true. He did outsnap him. But Derrick Henry got all the carries. And I don't think they're going to keep that up necessarily because that kind of tips their uh, – their game plan, like whenever Henry's on the field, they're probably going to hand off to him. And Tajay Spears is on the field, they're not. Um, you just can't do that because defenses are going to pick up on that very easily. And so um, I, I expect Henry to still be a, a really good play. You know, um, they threw him the ball a couple times, which was nice to see. Um, and yeah, Derrick Henry was the RB15 last week. Not a good, not what you wanted necessarily, but I, I think he can bounce back. Chargers notoriously not very good against the uh, the ground game, so. Um, I, I'm starting Henry, and then the receivers. If Hopkins play, if Hopkins plays, I'm starting him, and that's basically it. I'm not going to start Traylon Burks, um, most likely. Just kind of looking at the guys he's ranked around again. I look at um, Fantasy Pros ADP if you or um, Week Two rankings. If you guys are interested to see kind of reference where I'm, I'm looking at. I'm like, yeah, I'll start Traylon over like JSN, uh, Odell Beckham. Sky Moore, Juju, Tyler Boyd, um, Zay Jones, but I'm not start. I, I'd probably start him over Elijah Moore, and probably Marquise Brown, and that's kind of where it ends for me. Like I'm, I'm starting Romeo Dobbs, Puka Nakua, um, Nico Collins, Drake London. Uh, I don't know. I, I'd probably start Traylon over over Drake London. I, I need to see it from Drake London. I need to see something. Like the team's gonna throw more than 18 times. Um yeah. Yeah. Cortland Sutton, I'd start over Traylon Burks, Gabe Davis. So, you know, Traylon's kind of like a he's like a fringe wide receiver three for me. Um I I, I just again I'm, I'm my motto this this fantasy year is I, I need to see it. I, I want to see it. Perfect example, again, I mentioned this in the last video is is Sky Moore and in, in week one, where everyone so many people started Sky Moore because they say, Oh, Kelsey's out. They need to throw the ball. Sky Moore seems to be like the logical choice, so I'm going to start him. But we had never seen it from Sky Moore all last year. The guy had like 200 and something yards receiving. We didn't see not even a flash. At least we've seen a flash with Traylon. We've seen a four week stretch with Christian Watson. Guys like these, we've seen flashes. We saw nothing with Sky Moore, and look what it look what it ended up as. So um, I just want to see it first. I really do. If you have to start him, you know, if you do have multiple options like the. The JSN, Odo, Odo Beckham, Sky Moore, Traylon Burks. Like, yeah, I'll take him over those guys. So maybe in three wide receiver leagues he's being started, but I kind of want to avoid it personally. Um, and then Chico Conquo is really the only other guy to talk about. He's another one where I probably don't want to start him, and you probably don't have to, considering you if you drafted him, you probably have two tight ends. And you know, add add that on top of the guys like a Hunter Henrys or the Hayden Hursts of the world who are, <clears throat> excuse me, who are picked up on the uh, waiver wire. Um, I would roll with one of those guys, you know, Henry, Juwan Johnson, Dalton Schultz, Jake Ferguson, Cole Komet, Hayden Hurst. 
I'd maybe enroll with the, uh, Gerald Everett over over Chig. I like Chig, but again, I need to see a little bit more volume and a little more consistency from the uh, from Ryan Tannehill. So um, we'll get it to game two. Game two is the Giants at the Cardinals. Um, minus four and a half favorites are the Giants over under at 40. I mentioned it. There's a lot of low over under games, several 40 or lower, which is not what we want to see for fantasy football. doesn't mean it's going to play out that way, but Vegas is usually pretty good. Just in this slate, we have one, two, three, four, five, five of the eight games we're talking about have an over under of 40 or less. So that's not great. Um, in terms of the Giants, I'm probably going to roll with Daniel Jones again. Daniel Jones is one of those guys that you most likely drafted, and you know he's he was like your one A or one B. Like you drafted maybe two guys, like a Goff and a Daniel Jones. Um, if you did that, I would choose Jared Goff. But if you drafted Daniel Jones and like Geno Smith, I'm going to go Daniel Jones. If you drafted him and Brock Purdy, I'm going to go Daniel Jones. Um, Dak Prescott or Daniel Jones, I'm going to go Daniel Jones. I know it sounds crazy, but I just think, one, the Jets have a really good defense. That's who Dak is playing. And two, their defense is really good, so they might might not have to pass and sling the ball around a lot, which is probably what they want to do. So Daniel Jones, like he's, it's more the matchup than anything. He's not playing the Cowboys, so I think he can bounce back. I think this offense as a whole is going to bounce back against, um, against the Cardinals, and the Cardinals are just a bad a very bad team. Um, Daniel Jones does have the the um, uh, rushing floor, and so uh, there's always that intrigue. He could get to 50, 60 yards on the ground, which is kind of what he did all last year. And, and you kind of just look at, you know, they gave up 200 yards and a touchdown to Sam Howell last week. The Cardinals did, um, and a, and a rushing touchdown, by the way. But just looking at the passing stuff, they gave up 200 yards and a touchdown. So if you say, okay, Daniel Jones, if you get me 200 yards and a touchdown that's um and six point for passing touchdown that's 14 and then you tack on another 50 yards on the ground like you're up to 19 points that's that's the value of the running quarterbacks like he only really has to put up like 200 and a touchdown and i think that's like bare minimum what he's gonna do so i'm, I'm rolling with daniel jones saquon is a no-brainer we don't need to talk about yeah we don't need to talk about saquon barkley he's he's a no-brainer um start for me and um I don't want to start any of these receivers. We saw nothing. Unfortunately, that game was just like shit show. So like we literally saw nothing um, from like, oh, who could possibly be the receiver um, for, for the Giants? It was just so bad we didn't get a CA. So I'm, I'm avoiding all those receivers. I'm going to hold on to one of them one more week. I'm going to hold on to a Hodgins or a, or a, um, a Paris Campbell just one more week just to see. And if they don't do anything – the Giants suck again, then they're gone. If one of them hits, then good. Then you have them on your roster, awesome. But as of now, we're not starting them. Darren Waller, man, I'm nervous about his his hamstring stuff. If he plays, you're probably going to start him because you drafted him as such. But, man, he's looking like a guy that could kind of take some leagues a little bit. Just a little nervous there with with um, with Darren Waller and, and his, his quote-unquote hamstring injury that put him on IR last year. So... It makes me uh makes me a little nervous there. Um, that's kind of it with the Giants. With the Cardinals, you're not starting Josh Dobbs. The only guy I'm really excited, to, not even excited, but I, that I'm probably going to start, like no brainer to me, is is a James Conner. Um, again, you probably drafted him as like your RB two or flex player. I think he's a good RB two this week. Um, I mean, even even last week he was an RB two. He was RB twenty four. Um, and I think he's just going to get all the ground game and he's going to catch four or five dump offs. And I think he can just have, he's going to have a safe RB two floor with a RB one upside if he can get into the end zone. So, um, other guys like the really only other guy to talk about is Marquise Brown. We're not starting any other receivers here. We're not going to start, uh, any of the tight ends. Although do keep an eye on Zach Ertz. I think he had like 10 targets last week. Um, so if that continues, then Zach Ertz is going to be a, a pickup slash play because 10 targets at the tight end position is insane. So, you know, so you don't need much to be a top 10, uh, tight end or a top 12 tight end, wh- whatever it is. If you just look at last week, uh, tight end 12 scored 6.4 points, like in, in half PPR. So we're looking at like 40, um, four catches for 40 yards or just a touchdown essentially is going to put you as a top 12 tight end. So if you're getting 10 targets, Zach Ertz is going to be a play for sure. 
Um, where did he finish? He was uh, tight end 18, so he didn't turn his all his targets into. Let me just double check that. I'm not even sure if he did. Okay, so Zach Ertz uh, had, yeah, he had 10 targets. Okay, awesome. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on that. But in terms of Marquise Brown, the only kind of receiver, pass catcher that we're probably going to be starting this week or potentially starting. Yeah, he's kind of a fringe wide receiver three for me uh, at this point. Um, if they can give him a couple handoffs like they did, and and I, all he needs is like five for sixty. That's all you need, man. Like to make you a, a three wide receiver, one flex, start worthy player. Five for fifty, occasional touchdown, maybe fifteen yards on the ground, and and we're looking good. But I, I'm just worried about Josh Dobbs. Can he even get to like two hundred yards passing uh, on a weekly basis, consistently week uh, week to week basis? I don't really know. Um, I mean, if you're talking about like Marquise Brown over Odell Beckham or Rashid Shahid or Sky Moore or Juju or Tyler Boyd, uh, I'm going to take them over those guys. But if you're talking about Marquise Brown over like a Puka Nakua, Nico Collins, uh, Christian Kirk, Cortland Sutton, I'm taking all those other guys. Um, if you want to start Marquise Brown over Drake London, if you're taking the Drake London approach of I need to see something first from this Atlanta offense and that's fine too. So that's kind of right, right where I'm at with him, like right in that fringe wide receiver three range. Um, but hopefully you have better options than that or else you are hurting. And that's kind of it for the Cardinals. Uh, so we'll move on to the next game, the 49ers at the Rams over under is 45 points and the 49ers are favored by minus seven and a half. Another easy one uh, team for the 49ers. Well, we'll start with the quarterback position because I'm sure a lot of people picked up Brock Purdy this week. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm at the point where Brock Purdy is for sure a top 15 quarterback for me. And that means like during bye weeks and stuff, he's going to be the prime candidate to replace your quarterback on a bye week. I don't know if I'm there yet as like a, a lock starter, you know, um, just looking at a couple guys, like the only guy I think in the top 15. So the top 15 is Hertz, Allen Mahomes, Herbert Lawrence, Lamar Jackson, Burrow, Fields, Tua, Anthony Richardson, Jared Goff, Daniel Jones, Deshaun Watson. I'm starting all those guys over Brock Purdy. The one guy that's ahead of him that I would start him over is Geno Smith. Is Geno Smith. So um, Dak Prescott, mm, I'm going to go with Dak Prescott over Purdy. Jordan Love, uh, I'll lean Purdy for this week, but that could change. So that's kind of where I'm at with Purdy. He's like right there, top 16 guy, but most likely you're going to have someone you unless you drafted Gino and Purdy um you probably drafted one of those top 12 guys so I'm just going to roll with those guys once again I, I think the talent's going to play out there and then everyone else you're starting on this team uh you're starting Kittle because he's a tight end and tight ends are a weak position you drafted him to be a starter you're starting Ayuk you're starting Debo and you're starting McCaffrey so no questions there I mean um uh, I just want to see I have heard that um in terms of man coverage versus zone coverage, that Brandon Ayuk absolutely feasts against man coverage. And uh, the Steelers last week are a man coverage heavy team. And um, Brandon Ayuk did well. And uh, Debo does more zone coverage. Uh, he plays better against in, in the zone coverage. So we'll, we'll see how that, how that works out today. But I'm starting all those guys. So uh, in terms of the Rams, I mean, my big question is, is Puka for real? Um, I think he can be, and I think even when Coop, Cooper Cup comes back, um, that Puka is, could still be a viable flex or wide receiver, low end wide receiver too. Um, I just think he's really good, and I don't think it was a fluke that he got 15 targets. Um, but we'll start with Stafford. I'm still going to wait another week, see what Stafford does. You're playing against um, San Francisco, so I don't really want to start him this week, and you probably don't have to. Um, the running backs, I'm not starting. If I, I know, especially not starting Cam Akers, maybe Kyron Williams if you have to, but um, I ho hopefully your team's a little bit better to where you're not having to start Kyron Williams, who you just picked up off the waivers after um, after one week. If you picked up Kyron Williams and you had Cam Akers and you literally have no one else, that's fine. But just, just be warned that I think this guy's going to put up a very bad stat line because he's playing the best run defense team, defense team in in the nfl in in the um in the 49ers so try to avoid kyron williams there and then yeah it comes down to the receivers um tutu atwell i want to wait and see on him a little bit i want to see it one more time um 
So I'm probably not going to be starting Tutu Atwell, but a guy that I do think should be on benches. Um, and um, Puka, Puka Nakua. Uh, that's the big question here. Puka, I would start over guys like Christian Kirk, Drake London, Nico Collins, Cortland Sutton. Um, I would start him over Michael Thomas. And I'm even thinking about like guys like uh, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dawson, George Pickens. I would I would have a hard thing to sit and think about that one, and I might lean Puka over those guys. I know it's a ri- now it is a risk. That's one thing to keep in mind. If you need a safe some safe points, then maybe roll with one of those guys um, because there is a risk that Puka just you know doesn't have a good week two after having an amazing week one. I know people are afraid of San Francisco's run uh, defense as a whole, but their their defense against wide receivers is actually not that um, great. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say that, but last year they they absolutely shut down the run and they gave up some of the most points in the NFL to, to wide receivers. Uh, they were 27th best or worst, however you want to phrase that. They gave up uh, 30 points a game in half PPR to, to wide receivers. There was only only uh, five teams worse than that. And uh, week after week one, uh, they are ranked uh, 19th, so bottom half. So yeah, I don't think they're necessarily... Because you can't run on them, you kind of have to pass on them. So I, I'm okay with starting Puka. I think he can just have another, at worst, like five catch, 60-yard week, and, and there's the potential for more. So I am starting um, Puka over those guys that I mentioned. Um uh, you know, for sure over, I mentioned the guys, and then for sure over like a Marquise Brown, Elijah Moore, um, Romeo Dobbs. I, I would think about Romeo Dobbs over Puka just because I really like Dobbs too. So, um, yeah, I think he's in three wide receiver leagues with a flex. I think Puka is almost a lock uh, to be a starter this week. So don't worry too much about the 49ers defense. I think he can still feast. Um, oh, and the tight end. Um, yeah, I'll probably start Higby. Um, again, Higby's one of those guys where you probably have two tight ends. So if you have a one of the top guys, you know, the Kelsey's, Hawkinson's, Andrews, Kittles, Goddard, even Evan Ingram, go with those guys. But if you drafted like a Higby and a Laporta or a Higby and a Juwan Johnson, um, go with Higby. Um, I think Higby can just have a, a solid... I think people were expecting a little bit more last week. I, I personally was. I thought he was going to be a little bit better than what he was. Uh, but he was still top 11 uh, tight end last week. So um, I think he could get a little bit more if the teams focus a little bit on Puka. That could open things up for Tyler Higby. So um, he's a star for me. And, uh, yeah, moving on, we got uh, the Jets at the Cowboys. Um, Cowboys are favored by 9.5 over under at 38.5. Oof. I think that's the lowest – yeah, that is the lowest for the week. So this is going to be a defensive battle. I would start both defenses because I think they're really good. Um, on the jet side of things, I'm really looking at, can Zach Wilson just be average to slightly below average? That's all we need, please. I want Garrett Wilson. I put a bet on him to win Offensive Player of the Year. Obviously, that's not looking good. Um, um, so it's just, please just be average. Throw, throw 215 yards and a touchdown. That's all you need to average each week. Keep your team in the game. And um, so in terms of uh, you're not starting Zach Wilson, obviously. The running backs, you're probably going to start um, Brees Hall. I mean, you saw how good Brees Hall can be on minimal carries. I know he's going to be on a pitch count. I'm okay with starting him, um, especially because you drafted him in that range uh, to be a starter. Now, if you're stacked at running back, then maybe go another way. But uh, let me just give you some names. Brees Hall, I would start over Javante, Raheem Mostert, Brian Robinson, Algier, um, Dylan, P. Ryan, um, Cleo Herbert, Gus, any of the Ravens guys, any of the Rams guys. I would start Brees Hall over those guys. I would start him over Pacheco. I would start him over Jamal Williams. Um, James Conner, Najee Harris range is kind of where it's getting a little closer to me but at that point we're into like the top 20 guys so there should be room on your lineup to start both of them um something i will say is that the um the cowboys were good against the run last year so it's not the greatest matchup they were fourth best against running backs last week uh last year and obviously they did well last week because um you know they just completely dominated that game but um i i still think there's there's room for Brees hall 
to um, to show what he has. And again, I know he's going to be on a pitch count. Um, he's going to be on a snap count, but you, you saw what he can do on um, 10 carries, 127 yards. That's how good Brees Hall is. So he doesn't need a whole lot of touches necessarily to go off. So I'm starting him. Dalvin Cook is a different, little bit of a different story because of the matchup. Um, and just, you know, they had Brees Hall on a, um, on a snap count. Let me just double check this. They had Brees Hall at uh, 31%, right? I imagine that's going to stay either the same or slightly increase. Um, they had Dalvin Cook at 50%. And then Michael Carter, I think, was like the other 20%. I don't see that changing too much this week. So, that, like, I know I, what I just said about Brees Hall. He can make it work with minimal carries. I don't think Dalvin Cook is that running back anymore. So, with this matchup, I kind of want to avoid him if I can. Um, you know, if you're talking about Dalvin Cook versus Cleo Herbert or the Ravens guys or the Rams guys, um, then you, I'm leaning Dalvin Cook. But if you're talking about Dalvin Cook over A.J. Dillon without Aaron Jones, I'll take A.J. Dillon. Dalvin Cook or Algier, I'm probably going to take Algier. Dalvin Cook or Brian Robinson, I'm probably going to take Robinson. Um, that's just kind of where I'm at. So he he's kind of a fringe. If you have no one else, fine. But you should have another running back, and you don't need him at flex, in my opinion. Um, I'm probably still going to start Garrett Wilson again, unless you're stacked, but you're probably not because you drafted Garrett Wilson as maybe your wide receiver one. Um, I do knock him down a bit. Like I, I'll start, um, I'll start guys like Godwin, Evans, Lockett, Mike Williams, Hopkins if he plays, Zay Flowers, Michael Pittman. I'll start all these guys over Garrett Wilson. But once we get to the Jahan Dotson, Pickens, McLaurin, Michael Thomas range, you know McLaurin coming back from the injury. I, I'll lean Garrett Wilson for the for the just because of the talent. He's so talented. So um, I still think they're going to try and make things easy for Zach Wilson, run the ball a lot, and get Garrett Wilson the ball in his hands, in my opinion. That's what they're going to do. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at with them. I'm not going to start any of the tight ends on, on the Jets. For the Cowboys, you're, you're most likely starting Dak, unless for whatever reason you drafted, like, two high-end quarterbacks. Put it this way, I'll give you guys um, – the guys, uh, obviously, Hurts, Allen, Mahomes, Herbert, Lawrence, Lamar, Joe Burrow, Fields, Tua, Anthony Richardson, Jared Goff, I'd start over Dak. Um, Daniel Jones, I'd start over Dak. Um, Deshaun Watson, I would. So that's where I'm at. If you have Dak and Geno or Purdy, I would start Dak over those guys. So um, Tony Pollard, you're starting. There's no question there. CD Lamb, you're starting. Avoid any other um, wide receivers on this team for now. We just... We didn't really get to see, like, okay, what's Brandon Cook's going to be like in this offense because the team didn't have to do anything um, week one because they absolutely dominated on defense. So, um, yeah, I'm going to fade those guys there, uh, Gallup and Cooks, that is. And then Ferguson, I still believe in him. I think he led the team in targets, and he had four red zone targets. Um, but I, I'm fine with you kind of wanting to wait and see on him. Uh, I'll put it this way. I would start Ferguson over guys like Dalton Schultz, um, Sam Laporta, uh, Jawan Johnson, Cole Komet. But if you if you feel strongly about one of those guys, then then go for it. Start them. I'm not going to argue against that. Um, yeah, that's everything for that game. On to the Commanders at Broncos. Broncos are favored by three and a half. Um, over under is 39. Ugh. Man. All right. When it comes to the commanders, um, I'm not going to start Sam Howell. Didn't see enough from him last week. Didn't see enough from his legs. So I'm probably not even really going to be rostering him in one quarterback leagues, but not starting him for sure. Antonio Gibson is a hundred percent hell no starts. They did. They just don't like him. I wish they would trade him because I think he's pretty talented and can be used in very good ways. They trade him to the chiefs, man. But, um, it's a hell no, you're not starting him. Brian Robinson, on the other hand, um, I'm going to start him over a lot of, you know, I'm going to start him over the Jamal Williams, the Isaiah Pacheco's, probably Javante and Raheem Mostert, uh, Tyler Algier. So to me, Brian Robinson's a solid RB, a low end RB2 slash flex play for me. Um, I think the, the matchup isn't terrible. Um, but it's not amazing, you know, Denver at Denver. But, you know, this team likes Brian Robinson. They gave him 19 carries, and he also uh, had a couple targets. So, you know, 
I think, um, yeah, he can get another one of those 20 carry. Hopefully he can get to close to 20 carries and hopefully he can turn it into a little bit more than just 59 yards. Hopefully he can get to like this 80 yards and a couple catches and then you're feeling all right. Um, the receivers are a little tougher. You know, McLaurin, is he still coming back from the injury and things like that? That that does kind of hurt a little bit. Um I'm probably going to be starting them just given where you drafted these guys and you probably drafted them as starters in your starting lineup. Um, you know, for, for example, Dotson, I would start over Pickens. I would start over um, Sutton, Christian Kirk, Drake London, Nico Collins. I'm starting Dotson over those guys. I'd probably start Dotson over Puka. That's close. Um, but I'm going to start um, Gabe Davis, over over Dotson, um, and it, it kind of the same with McLaurin. They're back to back in my ranking. So um, McLaurin and Dotson uh, are probably fringe starters. If you are if you're stacked at receiver, then like yeah, you know the top twenty five guys should be started over him in my opinion. So um, both of those guys, um, and yeah, Logan Thomas is a guy to keep an eye on. I don't want to start him because I don't want to trust him after one week. But he was um, solid in week one. Uh, Logan Thomas was a uh, tight end 13. So all you need is about six, seven points, it seems like, in half PPR. And and so keep an eye on on Dotson. Curtis Samuel, I mentioned him as a sleeper in one of my YouTube shorts videos um, as a possible sleeper. I, I like Curtis Samuel a lot, um, mostly because uh, they hand the ball off to him and they give him – rushing plays about two a game is what he's averaged over the last couple of years. He had one last week and that just adds so much. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you get one for 20 yards, it's like, damn, that's two points. That's significant, right? Now all you need to do is get like 50 yards receiving and you have a, a viable uh, fantasy game because you had those 20 yards rushing. So uh, I'm not going to start them, but a guy to keep an eye on uh, Broncos. I'm going to try and bench uh, Russell Wilson if I can. Uh, what did Russell Wilson do last week? He was QB 16. You probably drafted him as your QB two. Roll with the um, roll with the guy that you drafted ahead of him, please. Again, all the studs that we know of, but also Jared Goff, Daniel Jones, the Watson, Geno. Uh, I would be fine if you want to start Russ over Geno, just because Geno is going to miss both of his offensive tackles in this game against Detroit. Um, I would start Purdy over. Um, Russell Wilson, I'd start Dak. I'd even start Jordan Love and possibly, yeah, and, and Derek Carr over Russell Wilson. Um, yeah, I'm down on Russell Wilson a lot. Jerry Judy, let me just pull up the Broncos injury report here. Um, Broncos injury report. Judy's practicing full, so I'm fine throwing him in my lineup. Um, yeah. I think he's going to help this offense a lot. Um, but, you know, I'm still not starting Russell Wilson. But Jerry Judy is is up there for me. Um, like he's in that, to me, he's in that um, Michael Thomas, McLaurin, Dotson range. Um, I'd probably start him over all those guys, to be honest. Because I just think there's a lot more potential with him. You know, he's to me, he's close to a top 24 receiver. DJ Moore, Jerry Judy. I'm probably going to lean Jerry Judy to be honest, um, unless they come out and say he's going to be on like a, a snap count or something. There's always that to, to worry about. Um, I'd start Judy probably over the Buccaneers guys as well, just because I don't think both of them are going to feast each week. Uh, one of them will, but I don't think both are necessarily going to have big games. So I like the potential more for Judy. Yeah, I really like Jerry Judy. And because of that, I'm, I'm probably benching Cortland Sutton um, now that Judy's back until I see a little bit more. I mean, what did we see from Cortland Sutton? Um, what did we see from Cortland Sutton? Four catches and 32 yards and a touchdown, and Judy wasn't there. So I'm just going to avoid Cortland Sutton as much as possible. Now, these running backs are a little tough. Um, Javante Williams. So tough. Let me see something. I'm just going to look up his, his stats real quick, his exact stats and snap percentage and stuff like that. 13 carries for 52 yards. He also had four catches, but only for five yards. That's not great, but the four catches is great. 
Um, I do think in this Sean Payton type of offense, these running backs are going to get catches, whether or not you're the third down guy. He played 45% of the snaps. I assume that's going to go up at least to 50. I'm going to start Javante for the most part. I'm going to start him over uh, Mostert, Algier, Dylan, Dalvin Cook, Leo Harbour. I'm starting him over those guys. I'll probably start him over Jamal and then Pacheco as well. So, yeah, he's he's in like that top 22 range for me. Um, and then uh, Samaj P. P. Ryan, a little bit better in PPR in my opinion, but Samaj P. Ryan also was intriguing. Um, and I think he's going to be like this all year long. I don't think it's a situation of, um, you know, just a situation of Javante being eased back in. You know, he played 45% of the snaps, and I think you're going to get that from Samaj, probably closer to like 40% most of the year, but you're going to get eight carries and four catches, you know, eight to 12 carries and, and four to six catches each week, in my opinion. So he's up there as well. I would start Samadre again over guys like, um, uh, definitely over the Ravens guys, definitely over the Rams guys. If Aaron Jones is out, I might lean AJ Dillon, even though I'm not an AJ Dillon guy, I think I'm going to lean Samadre over Dalvin cook, mostly because of the matchups. Um, and yeah, maybe over Raheem Mostert as well because he has a terrible matchup. So I, I like Samaje as like a, a deeper league flex for sure. Um, and then the tight ends, I'm not starting on this team. Um, the Broncos, that is. So um, Adam Troutman, I'm not not starting even with Dulcich out. So um, on to, we got three more games. We got the Dolphins at the Patriots. Um, Dolphins are favored by three over under is 47. Uh, you're starting to uh, you're starting Tyreek. You're, start, you're starting Jalen Waddle. There's no absolutely no questions with any of those guys. The only question here really is Raheem Mostert, and again, he's kind of like that fringe, um, or he's like that mid RB three for me. Which means most leagues you start two RBs, so he's kind of like that fringe flex player. So I'll give you some some wide receivers and running backs that I would start Mostert over. Um, I would start Mostert over. Um, Bad matchup, man. I would start him over Pickens. I would start him over Cortland Sutton, um, Christian Kirk. I would start Mostert over Drake London. I need to see it with those last two guys. I would start Mostert over um, Marquise Brown. If you want a little bit more upside, I would start him over Nico Collins. If you want a safer floor, I would start um, Nico Collins instead. Um yeah, yeah, it's kind of where I'm at. You know, I'm starting Javante, Mike Evans, Lockett, Hopkins if he plays over him. Um, I'm starting Aaron Jones if he plays over them, Garrett Wilson over him, Chris Godwin over him, James Conner, Jamal Williams over him. So I don't like the matchup against New England, but um, he should get 15 touches on this team, and that could be pretty valuable on this offense. So um, I think this is going to be an interesting game. But everyone else you're starting – on the Dolphins, Durham Smythe, pay attention because he's running a lot of routes and that's going to lead to fantasy points. Um, the Patriots. Not starting Mac Jones yet, but I definitely liked what I saw. But I want to see it um, more consistently or for a couple more weeks is what I mean. So I'm not starting him. If you want to stash him, that's fine. Um, the running backs, you're starting Stevenson. You just have to. You drafted him in the third round, most likely. Maybe fourth if you got lucky and um, you just kind of have to start Ramondre Stevenson, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think there's many questions there. You're not starting Zeke Elliott. What did Elliott do last week? I know he had a goal line carry, right? Or, or a couple. Um, Zeke had seven carries and five catches. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see that. Maybe not the five catches every week, but three or four and, and, and ten carries. I can see that. But I'm not starting Zeke. You shouldn't have to either. Um only questions on this team because I'm I am starting Hunter Henry. If I if you picked him up, meaning you probably picked him up because you don't have one of the top guys, then I'm starting Henry. If you have one of the top guys, start one of the top guys. But if you have like Henry and Higby, Henry and Juwan Johnson, Henry and Laporta, Henry and Dalton Schultz or Ferguson, start Henry because Miami is the probably the best matchup for tight ends. At least they were last year. Um, we'll see what it plays how it plays out this year. I know Parham got a touchdown for them. Um, in, in week or for the Chargers against them in week one. Um, 
and then, so yeah, really the only questions come down to these receivers. I'm avoiding Juju at all costs, guys. I don't think he's very healthy. He only played in, uh, he played in like less or just over 50% of the snaps. I don't think Devontae Parker is, is ready. Um, so basically what that means is I'm probably going to be a little bit more in on a Kendrick Bourne. However, a lot of you probably picked him up um, in, during the season or um, in waiver wires this last week. Yeah, it looks like Devontae Parker was limited all week. But anyways, um, with, with Kendrick Bourne, who, uh, by the way, finished as the wide receiver for last week, um, I, I, I kind of want to do play the wait and see game with Kendrick Bourne. I've seen too many of these games, especially week one, where like these receivers go off and then they do nothing the rest of the year. Like it's week one's just a very strange week. I can, if I can, I want to hold off on him um, and just kind of wait and see method here. Uh, but if you're talking about some names here, Kendrick Bourne or Juju, I'm taking Kendrick Bourne. Kendrick Bourne or Sky Moore, I'm taking Kendrick Bourne. I'll take Bourne over um, Odell Beckham. I'll take Bourne over Adam Thielen, Allen Robinson, Van Jefferson. Uh, Robert Woods, Jaden Reed. So if that's the range you're in, then yeah, start born. But there's about 40 guys that I would start over um, Kendrick Bourne. So I, I imagine I kind of want to play the wait and see game with him. So yeah, that's that's the Patriots there. Uh, we got two more games for you. You got the Saints at the Panthers. The Saints are minus three favorites over under 40. Another low over under game here um, with the Saints. You're probably not going to start Derek Carr because you should have guys better. Um, you might not even have drafted him. I would start Derek Carr over like Russell Wilson and Geno Smith uh, if you have either one of those two guys. But other than that, I'm basically starting everyone else that's you know ranked in that top 20, I would say. Uh, but I liked what I saw from Carr, and I've always thought he was a solid quarterback better than what Raider fans used to give him credit for. Um, I'm starting Olave. That's a clear-cut no-brainer. Rashid Shahi is an interesting one. You know, he's like a top 10 receiver on the week. It's one of those I, I do kind of want to wait and see a little bit. Like, is it going to be consistent or was it just like a, a boom game? Um, you know, so I, it's kind of like the Kendrick Bourne. I kind of want to wait and see. But, you know, if you're talking about Rashid Shahid or Odell Beckham, the guys I kind of mentioned with Kendrick Bourne, Rashid Shahid or Odell Beckham or Sky Moore or Tyler Boyd or Brandon Cooks or Darno Mooney, or Van Jefferson, I'll start Shahid because he has that potential. But, you know, basically all the guys in the top 40, even Marquise Brown, Elijah Moore, Romeo Dobbs, uh, Nico Collins, Puka Nakua, I'm probably starting over Shahid just because, again, I want to see it. I know he was good last year, but I want to see it one more time. I am very intrigued that they're giving him carries um, because I think that's pretty valuable and that can help his value and they give him, like, those bubble screens. But... I would preferably like to to wait and see on him. Uh, Michael Thomas. Yeah, I'm fine for the most part starting Michael Thomas in three wide receiver leagues. Um, you know, I'm starting Michael Thomas over like a Cortland Sutton, Christian Kirk, Drake London. Um, but I'm not starting him over like a Zay Flowers or Michael Pittman or, or uh, Mike Williams. I'm not starting him. So he's kind of like that fringe wide receiver three for me in that range. You know, he had a solid week last week. Um, just double checking. I think he had like 60 yards and, and five, six catches, or something like that. He had 8.6 half PPR points. So what, 50, 60 yards, a couple catches. Yeah, so like he was a top 36 receiver. I think that's where he's going to live for most of the year as like a wide receiver three. So um, I'm fine with starting him in three wide receiver leagues. Um, Jamal Williams, yeah. I like Jamal Williams this week. Way better matchup. You know, people are disappointed with what he had um, or what he did against the Titans. But again, the Titans are just brutal against the run, man. Those guys, ever since Rabel was there, uh, has been there. Um, the Titans have just been really good against the run. But the fact of the matter is he had eight carries and two catches, 18 carries and two catches, and uh, he played in 75% of the snaps. I do not see that changing. For this week, uh, and he's up going against someone, a uh, team that's way worse at defending the run in the Carolina Panthers. So yeah, Jamal Williams to me is an RB2. I'd start him over Pacheco, um, you know, Mostert, probably Brian Robinson, Algier, Swift, uh, not Swift, 
um, Smith played yesterday and he smashed um, Jamal Williams over AJ Dillon, in my opinion, smash AP Ryan. So yeah, he's a solid wide uh, running back two for me. And then no one else I really want to start. I don't want to start Juwan Johnson if I can avoid it. You know, I would start Jawan Johnson over like Musgrave or Schultz, but um, most of the other top 20 tight ends, I'm going to be starting uh, over Jawan Johnson. The Panthers side, you're not starting Bryce Young. You're not starting um, any of these receivers at the moment. Uh, Miles Sanders, you're probably going to be starting um, for the most part. I mean, Miles Sanders was decent um, in week one. Just double checking uh, his score. I think he was de- he was not as good as maybe we thought, but he didn't play as much as we thought. I think I think Chuba Hubbard took a little bit more than we were all expecting, but he was still a top twenty four guy. And I think that could possibly be because Miles Sanders missed a lot of time in training camp, so maybe they're easing him in a bit. I still think he's a solid, R, you know, low end RB RB two. You know, Saints aren't the best matchup, but like I'm starting Miles Sanders over. Um, I would start him over Jamal Williams. I'd start him over um, James Conner, Isaiah Pacheco, Javante Williams. So to me, he's like a top 20 running back that should be in most people's lineups. Um, Again, if you have uh, questions, specific start sick questions, leave them in the comments. I will answer them. Uh, And then Hayden Hurst, I think is a pretty solid, I think he's going to be a solid finish as a top 10 uh, tight end all year long, all year long. Um, He was tight end two last week. Um, I would start Hayden Hurst over Komet, Ferguson, Schultz, Musgrave, Juwan Johnson, Dalton Kincaid. Um, I would even do it potentially over a Tyler Higby. One thing to keep in mind, though, the Saints are really, really good against tight ends. Uh, If we're looking at last year uh, in half PPR, the Saints were the number one team against tight ends. If we're looking at... Uh, this last year, the Saints were the number one team against tight end. So matchup, if you want to avoid that matchup, I don't blame you. But I, I still think Hayden Hurst is going to be really, really good. Um, and that's kind of it for the Panthers. So we'll get into our last game, guys. We have the Browns at the Steelers. Um, Browns are favored by two, minus two favorites. And over under, again, 39 points. Um, I'm rolling out Deshaun Watson again. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um he still had a solid uh, fantasy game because he can give you points on the ground, which he's done his whole career, and I don't see that going away. So I'm starting Watson over um, Daniel Jones, Geno Smith, Brock Purdy, Dak, Jordan Love. I'd start Goff over Watson if you have both of them. I'd start Anthony Richardson for the upside over Watson. But other than that, everyone else in that top 15 to 20, I'm starting Watson over, obviously not the top guys, but um, the other guys there. So um, starting him, you're obviously starting Chubb. There's no question. You're starting Amari Cooper. It's because you kind of have to. You drafted him that way. Like, it's week two. Don't overreact to uh, what he did last week. Elijah Moore. Uh, Elijah Moore. They want to really, really want to get him involved. And I'm fine with, like, him making it into, like, three wide receiver and a flex leagues. Like, I'd start more over Zay Jones. Era, JSN, Traylon Burks, Rashid Shahid. I'd start him over those guys, but I wouldn't start him over like Nico Collins or um, uh, Sutton or Gabe Davis. So he's kind of in that fringe wide receiver three range for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you're probably starting in Choku, I would say. Um, I know people are, listening, again, a little disappointed, but I, I'm starting in Joku almost basically everyone out from from tight end 10 onwards are probably starting in Joku over those guys. So um, pretty easy team in my opinion. Uh, the Steelers not starting Pickett. Deontay's out. Najee Harris, you're going to start again. You got to roll with him at least a couple more weeks. If he keeps putting up performances like he did this last week, then you can bench him. But as of now, he's an RB2 for me and he should be in starting lineups. You're not starting Jalen Warren, not just yet. So we see something a little bit more. Um, now, when it comes to the receivers, I'm not super high on George Pickens, but I understand the opportunity now is there. So I could see him having a, a pop game here because Deontay's out. And, um, you know, the matchup's not terrible. It's, it's not the best, but it's not terrible. Yeah, I'd start Pickens over guys like, um, you know, the guys like, uh, like Drake London's um, of the world and stuff like that. But I probably would start... Uh, I would start Pickens over Kirk, London, Sutton, um, 
Collins, Nico Collins, Elijah Moore, uh, Marquise Brown, but I wouldn't start him over like Michael Pittman, Zay Flowers, Hopkins if he plays, Mike Williams. So he's in that like fringe wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three range for me uh, because he could get see an uptick in targets, but uh, we'll, we will see about that. And Pratt Fryer, if you're probably starting, unless for whatever reason you drafted like two top eight tight ends, then don't start to uh, Fryer Muth. So um, I think that is it for the second slate of games. So we're going to finish up there. If Again, if you guys have any specific start sick questions, drop them in the comments. Um, and just do me a favor, like the video and subscribe. And we will be back uh, with the review show Monday afternoon. You guys will see that. We'll catch you guys.